How real of a God is it if God automatically approves of everything that I approve of and God automatically detests everything that I detest? Who is made in whose image? Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. So recently I was reading a book by uh, a Protestant pastor named John Bevere. And in this book, he tells the story about how he was at a Christian conference at a hotel or resort somewhere, and uh, he was checking into the hotel. And while he was in the process of checking in, there was another woman who was at the, at the same hotel for a different conference. And they were waiting, you know, for his room to get ready, her room to get ready. And so they just started talking with each other. And it was revealed that she also was a Christian. And so he was very excited about this. And, but he said, but some, something kind of happened where as she was describing to him who Jesus was, he realized that the Jesus that this woman was describing was not actually the Jesus who's revealed in scripture. That the, this was kind of a hodgepodge collection of, of her own particular version of Jesus, right? The uh, things that she chose to believe about Jesus that scripture doesn't reveal. Things she chose to believe about Jesus that maybe came to her through culture or through uh, another pastor or through another teacher or just through her own preferences. And he said, in this moment, this is why I want to like, share this example he gave because he, he said, in that moment, I just was like, how, how, how do I respond to this woman who's you know engaging me in this conversation? She believes that she's a Christian. She believes that she knows Jesus. And yet that's not Jesus. So he said he prayed to the Holy Spirit, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing. He looked up and he said, you see that guy across the pool? And she said, yeah, his name is Matt. And Matt, he's an accomplished orthopedic surgeon. He actually originally went to law school, but then uh, he, he decided he wanted to serve people in, in becoming a surgeon. So he became a surgeon. He's a, he was a track star at the university where he was, but now he's actually training in his time while he's actually being a surgeon. He's, he's training to be on the Olympic team in running on the weekends. He loves to donate his time to um, help puppies and kittens. And over there, that, that's, uh, that's Beth. And Beth is, is, is Matt's wife. And she herself is actually a cancer researcher. And she is in his, this whole thing, right? He told the story. And she says, well, wow, do you, are they at the conference with you? And he said, no, no, no. I've never met them. And she says, wait, if you don't know them, how, how do you know that about them? He says, oh, it doesn't really matter. That's what I believe to be true about them. That's what I believe is true about this guy that I've never met. That's what I believe to be true about this woman that I've never met. And she said, well, why, why are you saying that? He said, well, because just kind of in a similar way to you, you're saying that you believe these things about Jesus that aren't true, that Jesus has never revealed this about himself in scripture. He's never revealed this about himself uh, in the whole history of Christianity. But you're saying that you believe about, about him, even though it isn't true. <laughs> he said that um, she pretty quickly ended their conversation with each other, which that makes sense. I mean, it's kind of like you're just having a conversation with someone and they're kind of like, I busted, you know, kind of situation. But I remember thinking as he was, is, as in the book he was sharing this, we have our own version of Jesus. Okay, this is the Jesus that approves everything that I approve of. This is the Jesus that hates everything that I hate. So basically what we've done is we've made God in our image and likeness rather than realize, okay, wait, I'm made in God's image and likeness. He's made me in his image and likeness. Therefore, I need to learn to love what God loves. And I need to learn to hate what God hates. Does that make sense? And yet that is, again, as I said, it's the plight of plight of our spiritual lives, in so, especially so many of us in the West, in the United States particularly. I, I cite this book a lot, even though by now it's getting on to be about 20 years old. It's a book called Soul Searching, written by a man named Christian Smith and a team of other psychologists, sociologists, team of people who had gone across the country and they had done a survey of the spiritual lives of American adolescents. And in that, they discovered that whether they were talking with uh, people raised Jewish, people raised Catholic, people raised mainline Protestant or evangelical Protestant, sometimes people raised with no faith whatsoever, the vast majority of Americans believed the same thing. The vast majority of Americans believed in what he and his team termed moralistic therapeutic deism. And that moralistic therapeutic deism is, it has five tenets. I don't know. I can't remember all of them right offhand. But one of them is God is good and he wants us to be good. <laughs> okay, great. Another one is that uh, God is not really, doesn't have to be really involved in your life unless you need him to solve some crisis. Uh, another one is that good people go to heaven when they die. And kind of parenthetically, we're all good people, <laughs> except for like Hitler or Stalin, Mao, that kind of person. And he said, we, our, our team realized this, that as we were talking to all these adolescents, they all had this same version of God, regardless of what they actually professed to believe, whether they were, again, Jewish or atheist or Christian or Catholic, they all had this, this kind of vision of God that was more American or more Western than anything else. We have a whole generation of people professing faith in Jesus without really knowing who Jesus is. Now, this is one of the reasons why a couple of years ago, we at Ascension had decided to do this project called the Bible in a Year 
podcast, right? This that sense of being able to go back and say, let's read through the entire Bible. In fact, so much of what drives the Bible studies that Ascension presents, <laughs> Ascension produces, and what drives these Bible studies and what drove that podcast, the Bible in a Year podcast, is this necessity, this need that we have to recover a biblical worldview that we need to, that we have to have this, this sense of like, okay, God, I don't want to just believe in my own version of who you are. I want to actually know who you are. Who have you revealed yourself to be? And unless we have a biblical worldview, unless we have a biblical imagination, right? Unless we actually let God tell us who he, who he is, I'm going to be saying, I believe in God. But I'm going to ultimately be saying, I believe in my own version of God. I mean, I've, I've, I've shared this with a number of places Sometimes people have asked, you know, what, what, are, what are the great things that have come out of the Bible in a year? And there are many great things. So many people who have come to faith because they've just allowed God's word to speak to their mind and to their hearts. Incredible. But there have also been people who have said, you know, I'm listening to the Bible. And I, I mean, I've been Catholic my whole life. I've been Christian my whole life. And now I'm finally listening to the, the Bible and all, all the stories, not just some of the stories, but every word from every page. And I don't know if I like this God very much. I don't know if I can believe in this God with my whole life. I don't know if I want to believe in this God because here's God who reveals himself to not be my own version. Here's God who reveals himself to be his own. He, he is his own person or trinity of persons, right? God is his, he gets to tell me who he is. And I have a choice. I either get to say, amen, and I place my trust in you. Amen. And I receive your revelation to me. I, amen. And I, I, I live for you. Or we get to say, no, thanks. People are so worried recently about uh, the rise of the nuns, right? Rel the rise of those people who are unaffiliated with any kind of denomination, any kind of uh, real religious faith. But I don't think that this is anything new. I think this has been coming for a long time. I think that for a very, very long time here in the West, even if I'm Jewish, if I'm atheist, if I'm mainline Protestant, if I'm Catholic, whatever the thing is, I've been professing faith in God. I've been, or as a Christian, or as a Catholic, I've been professing faith in Jesus. But really what I've been meaning is my own particular version of God, my own particular version of Jesus. And so I checked the box, whatever I was baptized as, or whatever I was raised as, I checked that box. And now we have a generation, maybe for the first time in our our recent history, a generation of people who are saying, no, 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 I believe exactly what my, parents, what my parents believed. I believe in my own version of God. I believe in my own version of Jesus. And I'm not going to check the box. I think that this generation who doesn't check the box as being religiously unaffiliated, I think that they are just like their parents, maybe even just like their grandparents, except for one difference. Is they're not just going to automatically check a box. I think the answer to that is not throwing up our hands and saying, what the heck? I can't believe this is what the world has come to. I think the answer to that is let's reclaim a biblical worldview. Let's retell the story. Let's, let's actually profess this is who Jesus really is by simply reading the story, by simply retelling the story, by simply recounting the story, as we say in the Bob Bellinier podcast, by simply pressing play and letting God speak to us. And when he's spoken to us, to have that, those open hearts, that open mind that says, okay, God, this is who you have revealed yourself to be. Amen. I believe. I profess faith in you and I'm going to let you love me as you are and you're going to love me as I am. I think that's the next step. I think that's the step that we as individuals need to take. I think that's the step that we as, a, as Catholics need to take as a church. And I think that that's the step that as we reach out to the people around us, that is the step that all of us need to take. Anyways, for all of us here to Sense Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless.